One reason the Apollo 1 crew had died was because it was impossible to open the inward opening hatch before the fire raced through the cabin. This was changed for Apollo 7. Command modules similar to that used on Apollo 7 were subjected to tests in the run-up to the mission. A three-astronaut crew was inside a CM that was placed in a vacuum chamber at the Manned Spaceflight Center in Houston for eight days in June 1968 to test spacecraft systems. Another crew spent 48 hours at sea aboard a CM lowered into the Gulf of Mexico from a naval vessel in April 1968 to test how systems would respond to seawater. Further tests were conducted the following month in a tank at Houston. Fires were set aboard a boilerplate CM using various atmospheric compositions and pressures. The results led to the decision to use 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen within the CM at launch, which would be replaced with a lower pressure of pure oxygen within four hours, as providing adequate fire protection. Other boilerplate spacecraft were subjected to drops to test parachutes, and to simulate the likely damage if a CM came down on land. During the run-up to the mission, the Soviets sent uncrewed probes Zond 4 and Zond 5 around the moon, seeming to foreshadow a circumlunar crewed mission. NASA's lunar module was suffering delays, and Apollo program spacecraft manager George Lowe proposed that if Apollo 7 was a success, that Apollo 8 go to lunar orbit without a LM. The acceptance of Lowe's proposal raised the stakes for Apollo 7. According to Stafford, Shira clearly felt the full weight of the program riding on a successful mission and as a result became more openly critical and more sarcastic. Throughout the Mercury and Gemini programs, McDonnell aircraft engineer Genter Wendt led the spacecraft launch pad teams, with ultimate responsibility for condition of the spacecraft at launch. The spacecraft contractor had changed from McDonnell to North American, so Wendt was not the pad leader for Apollo 1. So adamant was Shira in his desire to have Wendt back as pad leader for his Apollo flight, that he got his boss Slayton to persuade North American management to hire Wendt away from McDonnell, and Shira personally lobbied North American's launch operations manager to change Wendt's shift from midnight to day so he could be pad leader for Apollo 7. Wendt remained as pad leader for the entire Apollo program, when he departed the spacecraft area as the pad was evacuated prior to launch, after Cunningham said, I think Genter's going, Izell responded, yes, I think Genter went. B. The Apollo 7 spacecraft included command and service module 101 the first Block 2 CSM to be flown. The Block 2 craft had the capability of docking with the LM, though none was flown on Apollo 7. The spacecraft also included the launch escape system and a spacecraft lunar module adapter, though the latter included no LM and instead provided a mating structure between the SM and the SIVB's instrument unit, with a structural stiffener substituted for the LM. The launch escape system was jettisoned after SIVB ignition, while the SLA was left behind on the spent SIVB when the CSM separated from it in orbit. Following the Apollo 1 fire, the Block 2 CSM was extensively redesigned more than 1,800 changes were recommended, of which 1,300 were implemented for Apollo 7. Prominent among these was the new aluminum and fiberglass outward opening hatch, which the crew could open in 7 seconds from within, and the pad crew in 10 seconds from outside. Other changes included replacement of aluminum tubing in the high-pressure oxygen system with stainless steel, replacement of flammable materials with non-flammable and, for crew protection in the event of a fire, an emergency oxygen system to shield them from toxic fumes, as well as firefighting equipment. After the Gemini 3 craft was dubbed Molly Brown by Grissom, NASA forbade naming spacecraft. The first CM to be given a call sign other than the mission designation would be that of Apollo 9, which carried a LM that would separate from it and then re-dock, necessitating distinct call signs for the two vehicles. Since it flew in low Earth orbit and did not include a LM, Apollo 7 was launched with the Saturn IB booster rather than the much larger and more powerful Saturn V that Saturn IB was designated SA-205, and was the fifth Saturn IB to be flown the earlier ones did not carry crews into space. It differed from its predecessors in that stronger propellant lines to the augmented spark igniter in the J-2 engines had been installed, so as to prevent a repetition of the early shutdown that had occurred on the uncrewed Apollo 6 flight, Post-flight analysis had shown that the propellant lines to the J-2 engines, also used in the Saturn V tested on Apollo 6, had leaked. The Saturn IB was a two-stage rocket, with the second stage an SIVB similar to the third stage of the Saturn V, the rocket used by all later Apollo missions. The Saturn IB was used after the close of the Apollo program to bring crews in Apollo CSMs to Skylab, and for the Apollo Soyuz test project. Apollo 7 was the only crewed Apollo mission to launch from Cape Kennedy Air Force Station's Launch Complex 34.
All subsequent Apollo and Skylab spacecraft flights were launched from Launch Complex 39 at the nearby Kennedy Space Center. Launch Complex 34 was declared redundant and decommissioned in 1969, making Apollo 7 the last human spaceflight mission to launch from the Cape Air Force Station in the 20th century. The main purposes of the Apollo 7 flight were to show that the Block 2 CM would be habitable and reliable over the length of time required for a lunar mission, to show that the service propulsion system in the CM's guidance systems could perform a rendezvous in orbit, and later make a precision re-entry and splashdown. There were a number of specific objectives, including evaluating the communication systems and the accuracy of onboard systems such as the propellant tank gauges. Many of the activities aimed at gathering these data were scheduled for early in the mission, so that if the mission was terminated prematurely, they would already have been completed, allowing for fixes to be made prior to the next Apollo flight. Apollo 7, the first crewed American space flight in 22 months, launched from Launch Complex 34 at 1102, 45 a.m. EDT on Friday, October 11, 1968. During the countdown, the wind was blowing in from the east. Launching under these weather conditions was in violation of safety rules, since in the event of a launch vehicle malfunction and abort, the CM might be blown back over land instead of making the usual water landing. Apollo 7 was equipped with the old Apollo 1-style crew couches, which provided less protection than later ones. Shira later related that he felt the launch should have been scrubbed, but managers waived the rule and he yielded under pressure. Liftoff proceeded flawlessly. The Saturn IB performed well on its first crewed launch and there were no significant anomalies during the boost phase. The ascent made the 45-year-old Shira the oldest person to that point to enter space, and, as it proved, the only astronaut to fly Mercury, Gemini and Apollo missions. Within the first three hours of flight, the astronauts performed two actions which simulated what would be required on a lunar mission. First, they maneuvered the craft with the SIVB still attached, as would be required for the burn that would take lunar missions to the moon. After separation from the SIVB, Shira turned the CSM around and approached a docking target painted on the SIVB, simulating the docking maneuver with the lunar module on moonbound missions prior to extracting the combined craft. After station keeping with the SIVB for 20 minutes, Shira let it drift away, putting 76 miles between the CSM and it in preparation for the following day's rendezvous attempt. The astronauts also enjoyed a hot lunch, the first hot meal prepared on an American spacecraft. Shira had brought instant coffee along over the opposition of NASA doctors, who argued it added nothing nutritionally. Five hours after launch, he reported having, and enjoying, his first plastic bag full of coffee. The purpose of the rendezvous was to demonstrate the CSM's ability to match orbits with and rescue LM after an aborted lunar landing attempt, or following liftoff from the lunar surface. This was to occur on the second day, but by the end of the first, Shira had reported he had a cold, and, despite Slayton coming on the loop to argue in favor, declined Mission Control's request that the crew power up and test the onboard television camera prior to the rendezvous, citing the cold, that the crew had not eaten, and that there was already a very full schedule. The rendezvous was complicated by the fact that the Apollo 7 spacecraft lacked a rendezvous radar, something the moonbound missions would have. The SPS, the engine that would be needed to send later Apollo CSMs into and out of lunar orbit, had been fired only on a test stand, 